name and the Come on, worship your maker. Come on, worship the Lord. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you.
my king you are exalted hey you are exalted only me to god you ready to praise our Lord this evening. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we are going to worship our Lord. Hallelujah. Supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High. Now you be the original God. Hey, supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High. Supernatural Baba Supernatural Baba Dependable Original Now you be the original God Supernatural Baba Supernatural Baba Dependable The Lord of most high Now you be the original God Come on, let's go To the left, to the left To the right Come on, give God your thanks That is the highest you can give to the Lord
of the Lord is upon my soul. I will dance. of God this evening. You know you are not first. Lift up your two hands and let God hear your voice. Let go God has heard the voices of the choir. Let God hear your own voice. Come on, appreciate him. 
bless the name of the Lord. Come on, bless him. Tell him, Father, you are good. You are dependable. You are reliable. Faithful is who you are. Father, I worship you from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Father, I come tonight to offer the fruit of my lips unto you. Come on, lift up your voices. Let God hear your voice tonight in appreciation and in gratitude. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Sing unto him a new song. Come and worship him tonight. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. You know that the Lord is good. You know that the Lord is kind. You know that God is faithful. Come and bless him tonight. Yes, Lord, we worship Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Worship him. Adore him. Yes, Lord, we give him thanks. Yes, Lord, no one like you, Jesus. No one that can be compared to you. Father, we worship you. The ancient of all days will give you praise. The rock of our salvation will bless your name. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who has made us so wonderfully. The one who has made us so beautifully. The one who has created and crafted us so powerfully. The one who has given us his son. Come and bless him. We bless the Lamb upon the throne. We worship you tonight. Father, I can lift my hands. I can open my eyes. I can lift my voice. I can walk on my legs. I can sing with my mouth. I can hear with my ears. Yes, Lord, I give you praise for the gifts of life. Come on, bless the Lord tonight. Emani Kaporo Mosatayagam. You know you are not six feet under. <laughs> you know they are not hanging your leg in upon the hospital bed. You know they don't have to pass a tube before you can eat, before you can breathe. You know they don't have to pass oxygen onto you. <laughs> Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. From the depth of your soul, give God the praise. Worship him. Bless his name. He's worthy. 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 Jesus, your word. We give it up to you tonight. We give it up to you tonight. Hey, you know that those hands are not paralyzed. Come on, leave them to God. <laughs> in, in only adoration. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord, Jesus, you are good. Yes, Lord, Jesus, you are good. We'll sing of your goodness. We'll sing of your faithfulness. We'll sing of your mercy. We'll sing of your kindness. We'll sing the Lord of your gloriousness. Jesus, you are good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We'll celebrate your goodness. Father, we celebrate your goodness. Lord, we celebrate your faithfulness. Father, we celebrate your love. Yes, Lord, we celebrate you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If all the strands of my hair turn into tongue, Lord, I worship him. I bless you tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It belongs to you. It all belongs to you, Lord. It all belongs to you, Lord. Not unto us, O Lord, but unto you be all the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. I want to sing this song. Lord, you are so
<laughs> Are you sure that God is so kind to you? Are you sure He's an excellent God? Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. When I look upon the works of your hands, yes, Lord, just sing to me, Father, I know you're so good. One more time, we're going to sing that song to celebrate his goodness.
Father, we thank you. We worship you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let our worship be acceptable unto you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped him. Father, as we go into your word, breathe upon your word. Grant us understanding tonight. We sanctify every heart with the precious blood of Jesus. Let that be a mighty encounter. Let no man go back the same way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move in our midst tonight. Touch every life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every need be met according to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put song upon our lips. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have worshipped. Can I hear your amen? And your beautiful amen. You may please have your seat in God's beautiful presence tonight. Hallelujah. Now let me say this. Anytime you're coming into the house of the Lord, be prepared. Please don't ever come for any service casually. Your expectations and the level of preparation that you have to meet with God do you know <clears throat> when the children of Israel were in the wilderness? Anytime God wants to come and visit them, God would tell Moses, tell the children, tell the children of Israel to prepare themselves. I know what? It would take them three days to prepare themselves. Why? Because they were expecting God to come. When you come to church casually, with no expectation, then that means you are not expecting a visitation. And the visitation doesn't come just probably when the word of God is coming. It starts from the opening prayer. For somebody, it's from the opening prayer that you will contact your miracle. For somebody, is a time of praise. For somebody, it's a time of worship, even before the word of God comes. For somebody coming with expectation, it is when you step onto the ground of this church that you receive your miracle. How, how prepared are you to meet with God? Because every service is an opportunity to meet with God. We have to understand that. Don't come into the house of the Lord casually. Because you are coming into the presence of the Lord. There must be a great expectation on the inside of you. Even if the original intentions come and charge phone. But know that as your phone is being charged, you are meeting with God. Even if to come and see your best friend. Because people come to church for various reasons. But let it be that you want to meet with God. Let it be that you want the God of the heavens and the earth to visit you, to meet with you. Somebody says, expectation is the mother of manifestation. There is an anointing over every service. You have to understand that. There is a grace that rests over every service. Because no service put together by God is just for a casual meeting. Church service is not a casual meeting. It's not a casual service. It is a place of encounter. It is a place of visitation. coming, be prepared to meet with God. Before coming to that, how many people prayed? 
Father, in this evening service, meet with me. That is where it starts from. Oh Lord, as I'm going for this teaching service, meet me. I want to see you. I want to experience your power. I want to see you in a new dimension. As I'm going for the service tonight, speak your word into my life. As I'm coming for service tonight, Father, that secret that I need, Father, deliver it to me. The key that I need, give it to me. Because God comes into every service looking. Looking for what? Looking for people whose hearts are prepared to meet with him. Please, we need to have a different understanding when it comes to service. Don't come to the house of God casually. Come with expectation. One of the greatest miracles that our Father and the Lord that happened through his ministry happened in a house fellowship. Somebody say house fellowship. In a house fellowship. House fellowship. In a house fellowship. Many of you go for house fellowship. No expectation. Matthew chapter 18 says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. It is when you have a crowd. But when the gathering is unto the name of the Lord, always expect the unusual. Always expect the unusual. Because if the gathering is unto the name of the Lord, God is there. And when God is there, anything good can happen. So when you're coming to the house of God, when you're coming to the gathering, whereby the name of the Lord is being named, is being called upon, then expect salvation. Expect healing. Expect God to transform you. Expect a change. Expect a transformation. Expect something good to happen to you. Expect a lifting. Expect a blessing. Some, this is not my message. I don't know why I'm going this route tonight. I have a message. In Psalm 133 from verse 1, media, please help me. I guess somebody just needs, somebody needs this. Psalm 133. From verse 1. All right. He says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers, brethren, to dwell together in unity. Verse 2. He says, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the bed, even Aaron's bed, that went down to the skirt of his garment. Verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even for life, even life forevermore. But he said that, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren. When we gather together like this. As brothers and sisters in the Lord. He says uh, it is like an anointing. So there is an anointing over every service. There is an anointing. When we talk about the anointing, we talk about the power of God. So there is a power of God that rests upon every service. It is like an anointing that flows. So when you are prepared, the anointing will flow to you. I know when the anointing comes, it doesn't come to rub you on your head. When the anointing comes, it doesn't come to just pat you on the shoulder. When the anointing comes, it comes to do a work in your life. 
and it shall come to pass in that day that the body shall be lifted from off thy shoulders and the yoke from off thy neck and by reason of the anointing every yoke shall be destroyed so when the anointing comes it breaks yoke Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to open to preach the good tidings to the poor to open the blind eyes to open the prison door so when the anointing comes it can open every prison door for where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty now God is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so the anointing comes to give liberty to set you free So when you come into the presence of the Lord, backed by the power of God, that means the, you are a candidate, you are qualified for the manifestation and the workings of the anointing of God. And there is no joke that that anointing cannot break. It breaks the yoke of sin. It breaks the yoke of sickness. It breaks the yoke of death. It breaks the yoke of limitation. It breaks the yoke of stagnancy. It breaks the yoke of retardation. It breaks the yoke of barrenness. It breaks the yoke of fruitlessness. It breaks the yoke of lack. It breaks the yoke of poverty. So the anointing doesn't come. It's come and pat you and rub you on the head. It comes for an assignment. It comes for an assignment. But one thing that makes you a candidate of the working of the power of God is your expectation. You must be prepared. You must come with an expectation on the inside of your heart. You must come with an expectation to meet with your God. You must come with an expectation that you must not remain the same. You must come with an expectation to receive a word from his mouth. You must come with an expectation to receive guidance, to receive wisdom from him. You must come with an expectation for an impartation. You must come with an expectation for a transfiguration. You must come with an expectation to be made. You must come with an expectation that your life will not remain the same. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I prepare my heart to meet with you, to receive from you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, as your word come, let it come expressly. Let it be planted into my heart. In the name of Jesus, I break every fallow ground of my heart to receive the seed of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, tonight, let your word do me good. Let your word locate me. Let your word set me upon my feet. Let your word put speed on my feet. Let your word make me to soar as an eagle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 136, verses 1 to 12. So I've used that one to prep our hearts. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what did I say? When you are coming to the house of God, come with what? Come with what? Expectation to do what? To receive, to meet with God. Hallelujah. And God will meet with you tonight in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 136 verses 10 to 12. Psalms chapter 136 verses, verses 10 to 12. We're reading from verse 10 to 12. 
You know, this is the last Thursday in the month of the hand of the Lord. And since the beginning of the month, by the Spirit of the Lord, we have been having expositions concerning definitions, concerning the hand of God, making us to know what the hand of God can do, you know, how we can see the hand of God in, you know, manifest in our lives. On Sunday, Pastor Shego was preaching on, what was he preaching on? How to provoke the hand of, ah, three keys to what? Provoking the hand of God. And says number one, prayers. Number two, praise. Number three, seed of faith. Hallelujah. You are good today. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Celebrate yourself. Glory. So, um, Psalm 136, verse, verse 10 to 12. Talking about God, it says, To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercies endure forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 12, With a strong hand, and with a straight out arm, for his mercy endures forever forever. You can read the whole of that chapter, but I just said we should take that verses 10 to 12, because that is what is crucial to what we want to talk about, because we're still talking about the hand of God. Bible talks about the hand of God bringing the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. He said, with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, the Lord smote Egypt, and it brought the children of Israel out of the land of bondage by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what represents bondage. I don't know what represents Egypt. I don't know what represents a limitation. But the hand of God will stretch forth over your life, over your family, over your business, over your finances. And the mighty hand of God is bringing you out in the name of Jesus. Bible says that he brought the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. He brought them out of their affliction. Egypt represents slavery. Whatever it is that wants to bow down your head, that wants you to become a servant unto him, that wants you to become a servant. Let me tell you one thing. Money can make you a servant. Because when there is lack, when it is money that will determine what you eat, when it is money that will determine what you wear, when it is money that will determine where you go, then you have become a servant to money. But money is an instrument for you. You are to be a master over it. Bible says that the hand of God brought them from every power that kept them as slave. I don't know what wants to keep you under. I don't know what wants, what wants to keep you as a slave unto him. I don't know the situation that wants to enslave your destiny, but the mighty hand of God is stretched forth over your life and is bringing you out tonight in the name of Jesus. I said the hand of God is bringing you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Whatever wants to enslave your destiny, the hand of God is bringing you out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So, so Egypt represents enslavement. Slavery. Whatever situation that wants you to become a servant. Because in the land of Egypt, they were in slavery. In the land of Egypt, they were servants. In the land of Egypt, they could not enter into their inheritances. The land of Egypt was a place of affliction. But I said, God, when the time came 
God brought them out. God is bringing you out. God is bringing you out of debt. God is bringing you out of sickness. God is bringing you out of retrogression. God is bringing you out of stagnancy. In the mighty name of Jesus. He brought them out. Say, God is bringing me out. Let's read Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. He said, he brought them out. He brought them out by a strong hand. And by a might, by his outstretched hand. He brought them. He smote the firstborn of Egypt. He brought them out of the land of slavery. Exodus chapter 1. We're going to read verses 6 to 14 very quickly. The New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. Let us see where the hand of God brought them out. In time, Joseph and all his brothers died, ended that entire generation. But their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, Look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. I don't know that power that is threatened. That he said they want to cage your growth. They want to cage your progress. They want to cage the progress of your business. They want to cage the progress of your children. That was what happened. A power arose. He said these people, they are growing. I don't know that power that is saying that GICC is growing. And they are feeling threatened. And they are saying that they want to cage the growth of this church. I don't know who has seen what God is doing in your life. That you are going to accelerate that you are going to swear and they are looking for a way to peg you, to limit you, to hinder you I command in the name that is above every other name, every power on an assignment to cage and to limit you, I command that power terminated I command that power terminated I command that power terminated in the name of Jesus that king said these people, they are growing, no? Uh -uh. Can't you see? She's changing clothes. <laughs> Can't you see? He bought the first car. He bought the second car. Can't you see? She's even getting married. Can't you see? He's even changing job. Can't you see? His business is even growing. Can't you see? He's even sharing testimony. Can't you see the children are doing well? Can't you see every power that is monitoring your progress in life? I command that power to die in the mighty name of Jesus. I say let that power die in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that power die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that is monitoring your change of level. Every power that is monitoring your progress in life and destiny. Every power that is monitoring the progress of your children. Every power monitoring the progress of your destiny. I command that power terminated in the name of Jesus. And he said... Look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we. Now look at the next sentence. Please let me put it there. Please let us read it together. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. <laughs> if we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. <laughs> Are you see what I'm saying? Jackpot. <laughs> he said, 
let us make a plan to curtail them. Let us make a plan to stop their growth. So we must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. Where you are seated, I want to lift up this voice of prayer. Every plan from the pit of hell to stop the growth of GICC, we command that plan to fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray tonight. Um, every plan, every plan of darkness, um, every plan from witchcraft covenant um, to hinder, to limit, to stop um, the growth of GICC, to stop our growth numerically, um, to stop our growth economically, um, to stop our influence in this environment. Um, my Father and my God, let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. Every plan from the pit of hell to hinder the prosperity of God's church, to hinder the prosperity of God's people. Father, let that plan fail in the mighty name of Jesus. That plan will not prosper. That plan will not prosper. Father, we command in the name that is above every other name, let the plan fail. Let the plan fail. Let the plan fail. Let the plan fail in the name of Jesus. Now pray for yourself. Every plan to limit your growth. Every plan to limit your expansion. Every plan to limit your increase and fruitfulness. Every power that is contending. Every power that is contending over your life and destiny. Every power that is contending your prosperity. Every power that is contending your promotion. Every power contending your increase. Say, let us make plan to stop their growth. Every plan from the pit of hell to stop the growth, to stop the progress of your family. Come on command that plan to fail. Command that plan to fail. Command that plan to fail. Makata lagabo santa. Reketelebo. Rakapo satam. Every council of hell. Every council makata of wicked elders to limit your growth. To limit my growth. To limit the growth of my children. To limit the growth of our ministry. To limit the growth of my family. Financially. Materially. Spiritually physically, economically, socially, Father, I command, let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. In the mighty name of Jesus, Makatoli Barrekete, Rakapo Soto Yaga, Rakapo Koto, come and pray tonight. Whatever is being planned in darkness, Rakatali Ilagabo Satam, to stop and to limit you, to hinder you that plan must fail we command that plan to fail let that plan fail oh God arise scatter every evil plan scatter every evil verdict scatter every evil decree to limit my growth to hinder my growth to hinder the growth of my family to hinder the growth of GICC Come and pray tonight. Come and pray tonight. He said, let us plan to limit their growth. Let us plan to limit their progress. Let us plan to stop their prosperity. Let us plan to hinder them. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Every arrow of sickness that is shot from the pit of hell to hinder and to limit you. I command that arrow to backfire right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command it to backfire right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every device that the enemy is engaging uh, to limit and stop your growth, uh, I command that weapon to, 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 to I command that weapon to fail uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says, "No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper." Every
every tongue rising up in judgment. Father, we condemn tonight. We condemn tonight every arsenal from the pit of hell to limit, to constrain, to hinder, to capture. Father, we command every arsenal to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Okay, I hope somebody is ready for God tonight. Something is happening tonight. Please have your seat. Mm. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. <laughs> this is what the hand of God saved them from. Limitation. Captivity. Enslavement. For some of you, your finances has been captivated. For some of you, the work of your hands has been captivated. It's in captivity. Whatever is in the captivity of the enemy that belongs to you, let the hand of God take rescue it for you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the hand of God rescue it for you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever power wants to keep you in perpetual slavery. Now look at this. Then they will escape from our country. Do you know what the Bible says? Eh? The snare of the fowler is broken. The snare means the trap. So whatever the wicked have used to trap you, to cage you. He says the snare of the fowler is broken and our soul is escaped. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight is a night of escape for you. <laughs> so one of their plans was that they would keep them in perpetual captivity. So that they cannot escape. I don't know the plan to keep your destiny in perpetual captivity. Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, tonight God is turning your captivity. Tonight God is turning your captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. They wanted to hinder the ministry of Peter. See, if the enemy wants to destroy any life, you just need to put that destiny inside the cage. When they were to finish John the Baptist, what happened? They put him in prison. And from there, they cut off his head. When they wanted to attack the church, in Acts chapter 12, the Bible said that Aaron stretched forth his hand and he took James, the brother of Peter, and he cut off his head. And when he saw that he pleased the Jew, what did he do again? He stretched forth his hand. I see the enemy stretching forth his hand. Whatever thing the enemy is stretching forth his hand to take from your life, every virtue that the hand of the enemy has taken, every opportunity that the hand of the enemy has stopped, every good thing that the hand of the enemy has stolen from your life, I command that hand to release the good things of your life by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command those evil hands to release and let the hands wither in the mighty name of Jesus. See, he stretched forth his hand and he took what? Peter. And put him where? Where did he put him? Where did he put him? Where? If the devil wants to finish any life, he imprisoned that life. And this are that I'm not. There are some people that they are in physical prison. There are some people that are in spiritual prisons. Some finances have been imprisoned. Some marital destinies have been imprisoned. Some people's minds have been imprisoned. Whatever the enemy has imprisoned. One of the assignments of Jesus, did you look at it? To open prison door. 
Do you think John was talking of physical prison? Hello? Hello? Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Please let's quickly read it. Isaiah Sixty-one, Isaiah chapter sixty-one, verse from verse one. Please quickly be there. Isaiah chapter sixty-one, verse one. Isaiah six one. It says, "The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor." He has sent me to comfort the broken hearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Every destiny under captivity of hell tonight, every life, every finance, that is under the captivity of hell tonight. The anointing of God over this commission sets you free tonight. Yeah. Hmm. Say, then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them. Hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread. And the more, the, the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians walked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter. Forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the works of the field. They were ruthless in all their demands. So we see that in the life, in the, in the land of Egypt, where we started from was Psalm 136, that by the strong and the mighty hand, God brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now we're looking at what that Egypt signifies. That the hand of God saved the Israelites from. And we see that the land of Egypt signifies captivity. It signifies enslavement. It signifies, it signifies affliction. It signifies where you are serving with rigor. It signifies oppression. So the hand of God brought them out of every oppression. So the hand of God brought them out of every affliction. The hand of God brought them out of captivity. The hand of God brought them out of slavery. The hand of God brought them out of the power of Egypt. He brought them out of every bitterness. And I see that same hand stretched out over some lives tonight. Bringing you out. 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 That situation that is making you to complain bitterly, the hand of God is bringing you out. In the mighty name of Jesus. That situation that is, bring, that is taking bitter tears out of your eyes, the hand of God is bringing you out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now quickly let us see just two factors that made the hand of God to be stretched forth to bring them out. Number one, you must be tired of where you are. You must be tired of your situation. You must be tired. <laughs> you must be tired. See, whatever you cannot, whatever you tolerate, you cannot confront. If you are still tolerating that financial state, you cannot confront it. If you are still tolerating that affliction, you cannot confront it. If you are still tolerating borrowing, you cannot confront it. 
if you are still tolerating that, okay, it's okay for me to be begging, then you cannot confront it. Whatever you can tolerate, you cannot confront. You know, some people, they are so comfortable waiting for people to give them handouts. You see, the hand of God bringing you out is not automatic. You must be willing for a change. You must be crazy for a change. You must desire a change. You must desire that your level must change. You must think, you must be determined that your situation must change. You have a responsibility. You must be tired of where you are. You must be tired of going around in circle. You must be tired of begging. You must be tired of being in captivity. You must be tired until people gather money for you can pay house rent. You must be tired of borrowing. You must be tired of the situation that you find yourself. You must be tired of being on the same spot. You must be tired of singing the same song. You must be tired of being a spectator. Don't be a spectator in life. Be a participator. Be a partaker. You must make up your mind. I also want to partake of the blessing of God. I also want to partake of whatever God has for my life. I'm tired of weeping. I'm tired of complaining. I'm tired of murmuring. You must be tired of murmuring. You have been murmuring all these years. Has it changed anything? You have been telling the whole world your problem. Has it solved your problem? You must be willing to seek a change. You must get to a level by saying, enough is enough. My life must not continue like this. Something must change. Something must change. But as long as you are comfortable in your comfort zone, then expect nothing. God will keep looking at you in that comfort zone. Until the children of Israel cried to God, God did not raise a savior for them. Until the children of Israel got tired of their situation. But so at the time came, they groaned. They cried. And God heard their cry. But you want to ask me, did God, but God saw that they were in bondage now. Why did God do anything? No man, no. God, you see me now. God, see me now. God, see me now. <laughs> God said, oh, I'm seeing you. But you have to do something. Until you let go. Because God wants to know whether you are okay where you are. You are the one that will let God know, I'm not okay, sir. And that is by your action. If they say I have to beg you to come to church, then you are not ready. If they say I have to beg you to pray, you are not ready. While prayer is going on, you are looking at your man, you are doing manicure and pedicure. Then you are not ready. When they have to warn you to come to church, then you are not ready. When they have to warn you to seek God, then you are not ready. When you think you are doing somebody a favor by praying, by worshiping, by serving in the house of God, then you are not ready. When you are waiting for a perfect time, then you are not ready. Because the perfect time will never come. You are the one that decides the perfect time for your deliverance. Let me say that again. You are waiting for a perfect time. It might never come. You determine the perfect time for your deliverance. They were meant to spend 400 years they spent 430 years, 30 years extra. Please, don't stay an extra day in that situation. Thank, thank you for saying amen. But it's not a prayer. It's an advice. 
Don't stay an extra day in that situation. The day of realization, that is where your miracle starts. The day you realize, I don't belong to this level. My life is more than this. There is more to my destiny. I don't have a beggarly destiny. I'm a lender unto nations. I'm not a borrower. I'm not going to borrow again. You have to get to a place of realization and you have to get to a place that you arise and you make up your mind. I say, enough is enough. You determine your time of freedom. You determine it. It's not God that will determine it for you. So the first step, you must be willing for the change. You must be tired of where you are. You must be desirous of the change. I was telling somebody, the pain that you are going through, the pain is not to kill you. The pain is a wake-up call. So when you are feeling that pain in your finances, it is a wake-up call for you. When you are feeling pain concerning that business, a pain is a wake-up call. You have to understand the psychology of pain. You don't let me say this. You know, God bless us with a beautiful, beautiful, handsome boy on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, to the, fa to the family of Mr. Anointed and his wife. So we have a beautiful baby boy. Hallelujah. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was in the labor world, you know, with, with her. She said, Mama, I'm tired. I said, I'm tired, okay. You are not tired, though. This one, you go, you go burn them. Say, but the pain. And I said, and I told her, I said, don't you hear when they say, when there is no pain, there is no gain. Ah, you need that pain to deliver. See, you need the pain to birth your glorious destiny. Are you listening to me tonight? The pain that you are going through right now. The pain that things are not going the way you think they should is not to stop you. But that pain is to push you into the place of delivery. That pain is to push you into the place of prayer. That pain is to push you to groan. That pain is to push you to seek the face of God. That pain is to push you to bring forth your destiny. See, when you are praying and the prayer is not moving you, you think that prayer will move God? The prayer you are praying that is not moving you, you are still conscious of your hair. You are conscious of your makeup. You are conscious of what you are wearing. Then you are not ready. But the one that you are praying for, you scatter, you scatter your shoes. Malakato kata yakata. Rekete kegegegege. Oh God! Rapusu kuka kagaga yegegega. Maka. you taku ti jesu. That is the prayer that moves the hand of God. So when we call for prayer, and you are still mindful of the person around you, you are not ready. You won't see the hand of God. It takes more than your manicure and your pedicure. It takes more than you minding that you don't even have food sweet. In fact, you will forget that you have not eaten for three days. You will forget that you've not eaten for three days. We're talking of life. We're talking of destiny changing prayers. And they are still asking you to pray. They will ask you to, to, to stop. You will not be able to stop. Because that pain, because you must give birth. You must deliver. You must birth your next level. You must birth that business. You must birth that finance. You must birth that marriage. When a woman is in labor, 
She doesn't care who is seeing her. I'm tired that I'm taking your time tonight. But we're, because this is the last Thursday, we're talking about the hand of God. The hand of God being stretched forth is not automatic, sir. When there is no pain, there is no gain. See, let the pain of what you are going through drive you into the place of intercession. Let the pain of what you are passing through tonight, let it drive you to do seven days night vigil. Let the pain of what you are going through push you to the mountain to seek God, to seek the face of God. They groaned. They cried to God. <laughs> and God said, yes, this food, they are ready. Then he raised a savior for them. And by might, God now said, this food, they are ready. God now said, Egypt, you don't want to release my own son, I will kill your son. See, you need to first move God to say that anybody that wants to hold you down, their life will go for it. You will hear the obituary. There is a level you get to in prayer. That every power that says, oh, somebody say, eh, I won't let it go. You know what I say? When they are still negotiating with you, then you are not ready. But you get to a place of no negotiation in the place of prayer. You let that devil know, I am not no negotiating. We are not at a negotiating te table. I am here to deliver my destiny. As long as there's still room for negotiation, then you are not ready. Please, the hand of God must move on your behalf. The hand of God will bring you out. The hand of God will restore whatever the enemy has stolen. The hand of God will take you to your glorious land of destiny. The hand of God will establish you in your promised land. But please be tired of where you are. Be tired of where you are. And let that pain cause you to go and seek God. The second, the second point is that you, you must seek God. Seek his face. Be a God seeker. When you seek God, he will be found of you. Be a seeker of God. Praise the Lord. Be what? A seeker of God. Be a seeker of God. Number one, you are tired. Then number two, seek God. Because he's the one that has the solution to your destiny. He's the one that will bring you out. Seek God. Seek God. To see his power. To see him move on your behalf. Has somebody been blessed tonight? Bow down your head and talk to him. Talk to God tonight. Talk to God tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I make a commitment to seek you. I make a commitment to prayers. I make a commitment. I make a commitment to seek your face. Father, I make a commitment. I make that commitment tonight to be a seeker of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell so, Father, I want to see your hand. Hey, tell me, I want to see your hand at work. Over my life, over my destiny. Come and talk to God tonight. Pray and ask the Lord tonight that you want to see his hand mightily upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus that you seek him, you will find him in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I will seek you tonight. Father, I will find you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus in every area of our life. O oh God, meet our needs, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus as we seek you, Lord. Father, turn the tides around in our favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all things begin to work for, together for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your hand, O oh God, your mighty hands, O oh God, that set the children of uh, Israel free. Father, let it set us free, O oh God, in the 
mighty name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your mighty hands, by your outstretched arm, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, upon every life, upon every family. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your hands, O God, be stretched upon us mightily. In the name of Jesus, and pull down the walls of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, and pull down the walls of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, every stumbling block by your mighty hands, let them be pulled down. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your mighty hands, O God, let the captives be set free. In the mighty name of Jesus, your word says you are the Messiah. You are the breaker, the breaker of chains. You set us free from every chains, from every captivity. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, our soul have escaped tonight from every cup. Captivity from every traps of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise because you have answered us all night. Thank you for making us winners, for making us victors in your name. We give you glory. We bless your beautiful name. For in Jesus' mighty name, 